good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Who does America belong to? Does it belong to you or does it belong to the world? Who should have a right to move here and do those people have an obligation to assimilate into the culture already present? The University anchor Jorge Ramos will be here to debate the answers to those questions and more in just a minute. Also, these are very strange days here in Washington, some of the strangest we've ever seen. Republicans had seven years to agree on an Obamacare replacement, yet they're already squabbling over the bill they just revealed yesterday. Despite controlling the whole government, they've done very little to implement President Trump's agenda. Why is that? We're going to speak to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Paul Ryan. He should explain what is going on and why Congress seems not to be focused, or maybe they are. But first, they're calling it a day without a woman. Thousands of women skipped work today and instead participated in marches and other events they described as feminist. The official Twitter account for the Women's March on Washington in January proudly tweeted that women birth half the population. When women succeed, the world succeeds. Well, our first guest is the executive editor of Bustle.com, a women's website that shut down today to show solidarity with women. Julie Alvin joins us now. Julie, thanks for coming on. Sure, thanks for having me. So I just heard that woman say at the march, women have value and America doesn't function without them. And I, I think every person agrees with that. And the species dies actually without them. I, I completely agree. And I think I understand this march to be an attempt to show that women have value and are impressive, something that obviously I agree with. But if you want to show that you're impressive, shouldn't you do something impressive? Like, I don't know, cure a disease or fix the debt crisis or do a really good job at work? Taking a day off is not impressive. Anyone can do it. How does this make the point exactly? Uh, well, I think that, you know, the point of this is to show the impact that women have on the economy and that women have, you know, in the workplace. And one of the best ways to do that is to show what it would be like if women were not present, if women were absent. Um, you know, I also think that, you know, this wasn't a day where women were sitting around twiddling their, their thumbs. Uh, Bustle, right. in particular, really encouraged readers and encouraged our staff to take the day to spend time volunteering for women in marginalized communities, for women who are underprivileged, for women who are unable uh, to strike today. Uh, uh, we encourage women to call the representatives. We encourage women to donate to causes that support women. And, you know, this wasn't a day, you know, of fun. This was a day of action. And it was a day right. of specifically serving women and serving the needs of women in the interest of, you know, supporting women's equality. So right. I think all those things are very impressive. I, I mean, I can, I can see that. But if the point is to show that women are needed in the workplace, and obviously they are, women prepared the show that you're watching right now, <laughs> um, then why not do like an extra good job at work? to show you're valuable at work. If you want to show people, boy, you couldn't live without me, then act in a way that makes them think that. Uh, I mean, I think that protests and strikes historically have been a way to show the impact that people have on certain workplaces and certain environments by being absent and by showing, you know, if you're not going to value me as much as you should, if you're not going to pay me equally, if you're not going to, you know, protect me from sexual harassment in the workplace, if you're not going to offer me paid leave, uh, you know, this is what it would be like if I did not participate in this economy in general. And sometimes the greatest way to show impact is to show absence. And I think okay. that this is actually more effective than you're giving it credit for. And, you know, strikes historically have been enormously right, no, effective in showing the value of the people who are striking. Yeah, I mean, some have, some haven't. But the ones that have a very specific set of demands tend to succeed, and the ones that are amorphous tend not to succeed. So I, go, I went on the website day without a woman to try and figure out what this is about. And one of the things I learned is that you're supposed to avoid shopping except at women and minority owned businesses. In other words, if the business is owned by a white man, you can't shop there. You shouldn't shop there. Why the hostility toward white men? What do they have to, why white men exactly? Well, I, I don't think that it's necessarily hostility towards white men. I think it's more about being supportive towards women and towards minorities who are historically disenfranchised in this country, who are paid less, who are not treated as well in the, work, in the workforce, who don't have, you know, uh, stability in the workforce. Uh, so I don't think that this is about punishing white men. I think that it is about supporting women and people of color. Well, sure. If you're boycotting white men, it's, it's obviously an attack on white men. But those, you, you, that's not true, actually. So if you look at household median income, the top three slots are not white men. They're all people of color. I think the number one is Indians, and number two is Taiwanese, and the third is, I think, Filipino. Um, so actually, white men are not making the most money in this country. I don't know if you've checked the numbers. So it's a little bit weird to say boycott white businesses, white male-owned businesses, 
when they're not the most successful. What is that about? Uh, you know, I think that if you were to look at the statistics, it is largely white men that are positions of power as far as CEOs, as far as people in, uh, you know, power at various businesses, as far as people who hold the majority of leadership positions, who hold the majority of CEO positions for Fortune 500 companies. So, you know, I, traditionally and historically and factually today, uh, white men are in better positions when it comes to, you know, workplace equality than... But that's not, but that's not, that's not actually true. I mean, historically, yeah, I think that's right. But, to, I mean, if you want to speak historically, so the, the Department of Labor ranks this by ethnicity, and historically it was a country settled by British settlers. So if you run down the list, British Americans, English Americans, the number 41 for income. I'm not saying, you know, white people aren't successful. They are, but it's much more complicated than that. And so why not acknowledge that, I guess? I think that we're kind of getting off of the point here, Tucker. I think no, that the no, point the of point today is, is about women's equality. And if we're, talking about where, where we're, if we're talking about where women stand in today's economy, right. the U.S. is 28th best as far as gender equality goes in the world. They're 60th best as far as gender empowerment goes for women in the world. So, right. you know, maybe I can appeal to your patriotism on this point. Um, I don't want the U.S. to be 60th best in anything or well, it depends. 28th, I mean, 28th uh, best in course. anything. Well, I, um, I want us to be the best at this. It depends what the measurements are. I mean, come on. Well, anything, so, I mean, anything depends so what the I'll, measurements I'll, are. These I'll, are from, <laughs> these are from the World out. Economic Forum is the statistics that I'm okay. stating. But, I mean, what does that even mean? But I'll, I'll throw one out for you that I think is, is interesting. So for younger women, women entering the workplace, there was a, a recent survey done in the 150 biggest cities in the United States, and in 148 of them, young women in their 20s entering the workforce made more than their peers, their male peers. So things are changing. I mean, boys graduate from high school at lower rates, from college at lower rates. And young men, unmarried, childless young men, make less in cities than comparable women. So, like, that's good. You should be happy about it, right? Well, I think that there's absolutely progress being made. I will not deny that at all. It's, those are things that I'm very excited about. Were I mean, you aware I think if you that? were to look, yeah, I was aware of that. And I think that if oh. you look at, you know, the Pew Research studies, they actually say that while the gender pay gap is smaller, it's 93 to 100, it's still there. And I think that another thing that's an important point here is the fact that you know, uh, women typically encounter these uh, sort of reductions in their access to higher paying positions and leadership roles at later stages in their career. So okay, while they may can, start can, out equally... Can I say one thing? Okay, I know. But look, I, here's just the bottom line for me. I don't have a lot of time, but I just want to get your reaction. All the women in my life, and I live with four of them, you know, they're, they're powerful. And the presupposition behind what you're doing is that women are weak, they're victims, they're put upon by men... That's not the experience of the women who I know. Do I don't you see think the that we are that saying that we are weak. I think that we're showing our strength today, and we're okay. showing our strength in standing up for you know, women's equality in general and standing up for women who are not lucky enough to be able to strike today and standing up for women. You know, it's International Women's Day. There are 62 million girls right. worldwide who don't have access to education. We're standing up for all women. And so, you know, I, I, I love to hear that the women in your life are strong, empowered women and that you respect them. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but that might not be the case in all households. And that's certainly not the case all right. in all countries. Julie, thanks all for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me.